2 o'clock, and all of you is ready to go and take a nap, right? <laughs> it's always hot. Actually, when I was in college or university, the afternoon lectures are usually the, were the worst for me. I tend to go to take a nap too when the professor was speaking. And usually I copy all the notes from all the uh, all my girlfriends, more than anything else. They are the ones who are wide awake taking notes. They're really good. Um, 150 years ago, nobody dies from old age. 150 years ago, the average life expectancy was no more than 50 years old. So there was, no, there was not a need for any anti-aging products. Nobody was studying aging and how aging occurs in the body. 150 years ago, across the river from here in Buddha, a scientist discovered that the reason why people were not living or they were dying at an early age or it's because of something nobody knows what three out of ten women giving birth 150 years ago died during childbirth because the doctors were not washing their hands the doctors did not know what was happening 150 years ago, Dr. Samuel Weiss, across the river from here, across the Danube, discovered there was something that our eyes cannot see was causing that problem. Those little things that we couldn't see with our naked eyes were called germs. 150 years ago, Dr. Samuel Weiss suggested that every doctor delivering a baby should be washing their hands with chlorinated water. And it brought the death rate of women giving birth to less than 1% by just one action, washing their hands with chlorinated water. At that time, Dr. Semmelweis was not recognized for that discovery because none of the other doctors could see those little germs. And because they couldn't see, they didn't believe. And when they didn't believe, they didn't practice clean hygiene. And women continued to die during childbirth because doctors did not wash their hands. Now we come to 150 years later. We're talking about genes. We're talking about things we cannot see. We're talking now that because we are living longer, that there are little things that we cannot see are really responsible for how we age. So let's talk about those little things that we call genes. When I look at all of you, and when I look at your mother, most likely I can see similarities. I can see that 50% of how you look and how you maybe behave is response is was the result of your mother giving you her genes and the other 50% was due to your father giving you that look. We know that genes are responsible for how you look because of your parents. However, although you have those genes, they are not entirely responsible or we cannot explain the differences that we see between identical twins. Look at these pictures here. The left twin looks far younger than the twin on the right. Why? Because they have identical genes. They have 100%. If I take blood from both twins and I examine the types of genes that they have, I will not be able to find a difference. 
But yet, they look so different. Yet, the twin on the right is aging far quicker than the twin on the left. So really, it's not because of the structure of the genes. It's really due to the fact that the activity or the functionality of the genes in the twin on the right behaving very differently from the twin on the left. Same gene, different activity. And in science, we call that difference a difference in gene expression. And that is what we are studying in age-long science. That's what we are so excited to be able now for once in the history of anti-aging product development, we can use this new science, this new gene expression science to discover and to understand and to evaluate the best and the most optimal products for all of you. Whether it's a skincare product or whether it's for a nutritional supplement, we can use the same type of science to develop this super class of HLOC products. But what's a gene? It's a gene, as I mentioned to you, it's something you cannot see. In fact, you can't even see these little entities, these little bits of DNA, even under a microscope. You need far higher power to be able to identify these genes. We now have the technology to do that. We have reached a step or a stage in our scientific advancement that we are now able to look at these genes and to see how they behave. That scientific discovery happened or the human, the human genome map was created in 2003. In fact, I think in 2003, that discovery was far bigger than landing a person on the moon. That's the gene. It's part, and you can, this part of the DNA that is functional is under the microscope, you'll be looking at it as part of this bigger molecule that is called a chromosome. Okay? It's within the chromosomes. These are the chromosomes that you can find in practically every cell in the body. The woman has an X chromosome and the man has a Y chromosome, or the other way around. It's, that's the only difference between a man and a woman. So within these chromosomes are the genes, and here is what it looks like. Structurally, we now know that it is part of the DNA and is a double helix. And it's a very small bit of it, but it's very important to make sure that your body functions in an optimal and healthy way. And aging is due, whether you have accelerated aging or whether you have decelerated aging, it is entirely due to some genes misbehaving, if you will, in the body. So, to illustrate this important concept that we have with an age lock van, consider for a minute that certain genes in that particular chromosome is active, is, is two times active, and other genes maybe within the same chromosome, okay, they are about seven times more active. The combination of these two sets of genes regulate or control the aging process. This is what you will have, the optimal profile or the optimal gene expression profile of a young person. Now when you look at an old person then, the same set of genes behave very differently. Maybe there's a flip, or maybe there is a difference in gene expression now. The first set of genes is now five times, or five times more active than 
what's happening in a young person. And the second set of genes is really only three times less active. And that combination contributes to or what you would find in an old person. So that's an old gene expression profile. What we are trying to do with age law then is to reset or to reprogram, if you will, those genes in such a way that they go back to a profile that you would find in a younger person. That is what we mean, that using age law science, we are combining or blending different types of ingredients together in such a way that we can reset the gene expression profile to a more youthful state. That's the intent and that's the approach that we are taking to develop these new anti-aging products. And the reason why we are able to evaluate these kinds of changes or how to test our ingredients to see whether we can achieve this optimal profile is because of this new technology. This new technology is available now. It's called gene chip technology. And we can create gene maps such as these. So that gene chip all the way to the left is a powerful tool that we use within age log science. So when we put it in and we analyze the gene activity, not the structure of genes now, okay, it's the gene activity with this gene chip, we can create that map and we call that either a heat map or a gene map because the different colors tell you how active one particular gene is. On that panel alone, you can see several hundred genes or the activities of several hundred genes. So, consider that, that using that kind of technology, what happens is a young gene expression profile, the total profile now, may look something like that panel on the left. That would be a gene expression profile taken or created from tissue or blood of a young person. Now, when you look at the gene expression profile of an older person, you would see that map on the right. And I think even if you're not a scientist, you can see there's a dramatic difference between the two profiles. And what we're trying to do then is using our products or using a blend of natural ingredients is to be able to reset that old profile to look much more similar to the young gene expression profile. That's what we have done with, in certain aspects of aging, with R squared. That's what we have done with the skincare product transformation set, for example. These are the age log products, and that's the reason why we call them, that they will develop and we validate the benefits that you see from those age log products through gene expression science. So, now let me take you to a, another little thing that you can't see inside a cell. And this little thing is called the mitochondria. This is the battery that drives cellular function. This is the energy source, if you will, of every cell. It has become, among scientists, so important that many scientists now believe that this little mitochondria is responsible for many cellular dysfunction or the inability of certain cells to behave normally is because of a dysfunction or something that has happened to the mitochondria that makes it less than normal in terms of its functionality. For example, in this particular symposium in Berlin in 2010, we presented two papers by our scientists on how we can use HLOG science to influence or with through several ingredients to influence the activity or bring the mitochondria back to normality. 
So, we are participating in studying the mitochondria. And as I mentioned to you, this mitochondria is a little battery inside every cell, and the energy that it produces is really a type of chemical energy that we call ATP. Without ATP, your body stops to function. For intents and purposes, you die. Okay, so mitochondria is absolutely important, and it is when you eat the food, it takes the macronutrients from your food and converts it to this type of chemical energy that is called ATP. But during that process, during the process of producing energy, it also unfortunately releases a type of toxic substance that all of you know, and that's called a free radical because it's not 100% efficient. Insofar as the car that you drive, every day to work or coming to this convention, it is not 100, that engine is not 100% efficient to convert the petrol into mechanical energy. Some of it is converted into these byproducts, and that's why you have an exhaust pipe at the back of your car to release those toxic substances. The cell mitochondria, for intents and purposes, is also this cell engine, is not 100% efficient, and it will produce toxic byproducts. And these toxic byproducts, those little triangle things, will destroy the cell eventually. In other words, when these toxic byproducts, more and more of it is being produced during mitochondrial function, it will age the cell. And when it happens, it is, unfortunately, a negative feedback. It also aged the mitochondria, and when you age the mitochondria, it doesn't produce as much ATP, and it becomes what we would call a vicious cycle. The mitochondria causes the cell to slowly senesce, or to slowly start to age, and eventually die. So that is what's happening. So it's very important to control those free radicals, and we now know a way of neutralizing those free radicals with our products. And when you look at it, this is what I just described to you, except in a figurative form. The cellular waste will damage the cell structure, and then if you dam and these are all the waste examples of waste products that can come out from the cell that you have to remove. And uh, if you remove that cellular waste, you will have less damage, and therefore your cell continue to thrive and continue to behave in a younger state. Our age lock science, to remind you again, is really focused on looking at genes. We now know that the purification or the detoxification that is happening normally to keep your cell young is through a very important gene that is called the NRF2 gene. This is the cellular purification mechanism or system, and it exists. And what happens is that this is really scientific now, and that it, it affects the product that comes out from the NRF2 gene, affects other genes in the body that is responsible or that are connected to the purification mechanism. And ultimately, when you can preserve the NRF2, you can preserve your purification system. And as I mentioned to you, this is a vicious cycle. When toxic substances build up in the cell, it causes less energy to be produced over time. And so this combination of less energy with more toxic buildup, you have, the, you have the less of an ability to stay young, or your cells will start to age or senesce, as I mentioned to you a few minutes ago. So our anti-aging science, based on this new type of gene technology, is to identify the age-related genes and I've shown you an example of an important one, just one gene. We actually look at several hundred genes at the same time, but the NRF2 is important 
We are able to identify those genes and then through our library of natural ingredients, we can blend those ingredients together so that the final product helps the cells to behave in the most optimal way. And with R squared, that's what we have done. The night portion, that's called the R2 night, that one is really about detoxifying and purifying your whole body at night. Because I think you can agree with me that if you don't sleep, your body doesn't heal itself. If you don't rest and close your eyes, the body has lesser ability to reset itself, to repair whatever damage that has happened during the day. And that is why we are recommending the R squared night to be taken while you're sleeping to sort of almost re-energize or renew yourself while you're sleeping. And when you wake up in the morning, you take the R squared day so that you can recharge in such a way that you can do the whole day's work at maximum energy level. Very similar to for an electric car where you come home and you charge it with uh, electricity and the next morning you can drive it to work. So, and as I mentioned to you, uh, this NRF2 gene, that's what we are affecting, where we now know that roughly about half of it disappear as you get older and we can restore that kind of uh, NRF2 with the R squared night uh, portion uh, back to its optimal level. And also this glutathione, which is another natural antioxidant, there's 36% reduction during aging or when you age quicker. And all these things we can sort of reset and bring them back to normal level with the R squared product. So before R squared, I mentioned to you this vicious cycle, less cellular energy affects your ability to purify and detoxify. And then when you don't detoxify, your cell becomes dirty. And the dirty it is, the cells cannot produce more energy. And it keeps cycling in a very negative way. And that's what happened during an aging cycle. After R squared, we believe that we can restore the cycle to a more positive way. We can get you more energy after taking R squared inside the cell now. And then if this is not the rainbow type of energy that you'll be thinking of. This is truly positive and good and healthy energy that you need inside the cell. Okay. So when you have that restored, there's more energy inside the cell then it is able to detoxify far more effectively and efficiently. And since you have a cleaner cell now, you can produce more energy. And that's what we would call a positive cycle. So that's the gene science. That's what we've done to develop R squared. What does it really mean? You know, the scientists are all excited about this genetic data, but it has to translate itself to some sort of functional or clinical benefit. We've done those studies too, and we can show, for example, with R squared, that when you take it, you actually have the ability to really sort of have more endurance or more stamina. That study shows you have roughly 63% more stamina after taking R squared for several weeks. And then when you look at why that is so, we can also see when we look at muscle glycogen that in the presence of R squared, the person's ability to use the glycogen in the muscle even more efficiently results in about you know less than half reduction for this with the same degree of exercise. So, in other words, when you exercise without R squared, you lose half your glycogen. But when you take R squared and you exercise the same amount of exercise, you only lose about 21%. Far less loss, therefore, that contributes to more stamina and you can exercise longer. So that's what happens. This is an interesting study where we can show that after R squared, there is actually a slight increase 
in your ability to think more clearly. So it's not just about physical stamina, it is also about mental acuity, whereby R-Square can help you to improve roughly about 20% your ability to focus better and to be able to think more clearly rather than getting muddled. So it's almost in a sense that uh, the R-Square uh, helps people to not be, to be so forgetful. So we target everything that we need. It's an important thing now, when you think about R-Square, there are certain products out there that will be considered to be sort of liver detoxification or colon cleansers and so on. We actually are very hesitant in thinking that those products are healthy because that, that's not a safe way of purifying the body. We believe that with R-Square, which really doesn't focus on the liver alone, that it purifies the whole body. It's a systemic, if you will, cleansing agent at the cellular level. It's a far more effective way of doing it. And importantly, it raised the baseline of energy, as I mentioned to you, this chemical energy. So, this type of energy, again, is far healthier than trying to get energy from things like Red Bull, like from caffeinated drinks, the five-hour drinks that we have in the US and so on. Those things, we know why they work, because they have unsafe levels of caffeine and sugar. That's why you get that buzz, if you will. And you think that buzz is energy. It really isn't because you crash very quickly after those types of substances leave the body. Our product doesn't do it that way. It actually provides you with a truly the real type of energy called ATP that is required for every cell to work. So we recommended two capsules in the evening and obviously six in the, uh, in the morning with Vitality. I mentioned to you, we have presented many of these scientific studies uh, in, in conferences and including one in California as well. And that's the reason why we brought these two products together because you need the night portion to help the day portion to work better and the day portion helps the night portion to work better. So it's a very synergistic combination of the two products. So that's what we have in our square. We've got, uh, as I mentioned yesterday morning or afternoon, it's sort of, we have a few things in the pipeline as well. And we, we mentioned there's a weight management. Uh, we're working on some scan, new scanner technology as well. And those are the things that are in the pipeline. And uh, we'll bring them to you very, very shortly. So thank you for listening. Thank you.